In the winter of 2019, the American Midwest and Northeast turned into a real-life disaster movie. I'm talking about that time when temperatures dropped to negative 63 degrees Fahrenheit, there were massive flight cancellations and power outages, dozens of injured people, and shut down schools and offices. Simply going outside became highly risky. And if you're looking for someone to blame for all this, I've got two words for you. Polar vortex. That's not some scary storm, but a huge mass of cold air that's normally spinning counterclockwise around the poles. When it's summer up in the northern hemisphere, the vortex stays further north. Then in the winter, it heads south a bit. The term polar vortex has been around since the late 1940s. It shows up every winter and calls it quits in the spring. But for about the last 20 years, this polar vortex has been acting weird in the middle of winter. It looks like it either splits or becomes displaced once every other year. At the bottom of this vortex is what they call the polar front, or the polar jet stream. This jet stream moves from west to east, which is why places like the northeastern part of North America get hammered by that chilly polar vortex weather. Ooh. These jet streams zip along because of differences in temperature and the Earth's spin. When there's a big gap in temperatures, the winds really pick up speed. In spots like the equator, where the sun's rays are more intense, the air heats up and starts to rise. And as it goes up, it leaves behind a sort of empty space, taking in air from all around, kind of like a huge vacuum cleaner. But over at the poles, where it's way chillier, the air shrinks and sinks, forming areas of high pressure. It's like a bunch of air molecules trying to spread out, like a group of school kids on a big field. So you've got these two forces at play warm air rising and cold air sinking, air wants to zoom from the poles down to the equator with this setup. The jet streams tend to hang out where airplanes fly, about 30,000 feet in the air. Pilots often use them to zoom across the sky faster and save some fuel. But these jet streams aren't always the good guys, as they can bring all sorts of weather changes, like cold snaps and heat waves. When the polar jet stream is strong and cruising at about the same level as the vortex, it kind of locks in that cold Arctic air within the Arctic Circle. Every now and then, the jet stream takes a chill pill and starts moving around the planet in a wavy pattern called Arctic oscillations. This creates peaks and troughs that allow warmer air from down south to head north, and the chilly Arctic air to take a trip south. In the northern hemisphere, there are two polar vortexes. One in the lower atmosphere, known as the troposphere, and another higher up in the stratosphere. The stratospheric vortex forms as cold, dense air sinks and twirls near the North Pole. The mightier the vortex, the quicker it spins, keeping cold air locked over the high latitudes. When someone or something messes with the polar vortex, it goes haywire. Picture a spinning top. Give the table a shake and it'll start wobbling. When the polar vortex loses strength, it can't corral the cold air anymore. So blasts of icy Arctic air surge southward over North America. The polar vortex isn't a fixed object, but more like a living being. It gets stirred up by ripples on Earth's surface, triggered by stuff like air flowing over mountains or across land and sea, all warming up differently. If our planet were as smooth as glass, with oceans wrapping all around, the polar vortex would just chill out, never breaking up. But every time a wave smacks into it, it gives the vortex a push. Sometimes, one of these waves packs enough punch to shove the vortex off the pole or even spin it in reverse. And when that happens, the temperature in the polar stratosphere can skyrocket by a whopping 50 degrees in just a week. The Arctic's polar vortex started spinning in the opposite direction in March 2024 and got scientists worried. It's one of the six strongest flips since the 70s. This time around, it hasn't caused any chaos. Sometimes the waves of air affecting the vortex get strong enough to split it into two parts, kind of like how a cell divides. They're called daughter vortices, and they even add more chaos to the mix. When the vortex splits, one chunk usually heads over Siberia, while the other cruises over North America. Once that split goes down, the jet stream in the troposphere above the Atlantic decides to take a southern vacation. That jet stream usually acts like a bouncer. 
keeping the chilly Arctic air up near the pole. But when it heads south, that Arctic air gets a green light to crash the party in places like the East Coast, the Midwest, and even Western Europe. The storms that usually ride along with the jet stream follow along and head south too. They take their time to get organized and catch up with the new path of the jet. So, instead of hitting up Canada like they usually do, they swing by New York and Chicago for a change of scenery. Scientists still don't know why the polar vortex doesn't mess with the U.S. Pacific coast. It might have something to do with where the jet streams hang out in each basin. Over in the Atlantic, the jet stream kicks it at higher latitudes, while in the Pacific, it's chilling closer to the equator. It might also have to do with the landscape. In the Atlantic, the air has zipped over the Rocky Mountains, stirring up waves off tall peaks that mess with the jet stream. But in the Pacific, the jet stream is away from any big mountains that could cause trouble. The recent reversal of the polar vortex is unlikely to make the temperatures drop extremely. But scientists aren't sure what's going to happen to the polar jet stream in the future. They're concerned that the chilly polar air might make more trips down to the mid-latitudes and bring along more chilly spells in the long run. So it's better to be prepared. When the news tells you there's a huge winter storm coming and power outages are highly likely, fill your bathtub with water. If you have an electric water pump, it won't work and you'll run out of water soon. Gas stations also run on electricity, so fill your car tank before the storm hits to have some emergency gas. When the storm arrives and you're locked in, put on several layers of warm clothes, thermal wear, a warm shirt, a sweater, and insulated pants and woolen socks. Don't forget mittens so the heat doesn't escape through your hands. Hang dark blankets on your windows to draw in heat. Make sure your doors and windows are closed well, and put some towels under them to prevent drafts. Your basement is probably more insulated by the ground, so it could be a good place to spend the night. To warm up the cold winter bed in your home, fill a bottle with hot water and place it in your core region under the cover. The water will heat up your vital fluids traveling through your body, reaching all the extremities and warming you up in no time. You can also wrap your pajamas around the bottle before putting them on for an extra effect. When the power comes back on, check all your appliances and electronics before turning on the main power switch. They must be unplugged to avoid power surge damage. As you turn the water supply back on, keep the taps on the lowest level of your house closed to let the air out from the upper taps. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.